Hello and welcome. In this video, we're gonna cover a Pico CTF challenge called bloat.py. Now this is an obfuscation challenge. And what that means is that you're gonna be faced with code that is made purposefully confusing and unnecessarily complicated. And your job is going to be to figure out how to decipher it, how to, how to work out what the code does. So typically the approach here would be to, to give variables and then functions, if functions exist, more appropriate names and then work out the functionality of the code that way. And I took a little bit of a different route that worked really, really fast. Essentially it was really clear what strings were in this code. And I made an effort to print out whatever the string was. And this way I basically revealed some key information that made the solution a lot quicker. So yeah, check out this walkthrough and consider using this strategy in future obfuscation problems. Okay, let's take a look at it. Now, there was something really weird because I've had it work in one editor correctly and not in another. So um, I could have ended up spending 77 liked. So can you find a flag? Run this Python program in the same directory as this encrypted flag. All right, copy link address. W get that and copy link address. W get that. And here we go. So that's cat flag encrypted. Yep, the usual. Yep. I mean, there's a whole bunch of invisible characters here because that's yep. what happens like when you sort of XOR your way um, through and then there's going to be um, let's go G edit bloat and look at that now if you look at this right A is some collection of characters isn't it you get the whole alphabet mm -hmm. uppercase yep. lowercase you get all the numbers, numbers. You get, it's, like, it's like an encoding table right uh-huh and look at that. That's a that's a string. That's yep. a string. That's a string. That's a string. Yeah. That's a string. So like instead of there are people uh, I started to do that actually. I started yeah. to cuz I couldn't get it inside the um, Kali. And so I started uh -huh. to start naming these functions to figure out how the code works. I mean, I guess that's what reverse engineering is, right? So yep. I was like trying to get the function name by function name by function name to work out what they do uh -huh. um, because I couldn't get the answer just by printing strings. And then mm -hmm. for whatever reason, I decided to try it in REPL and then I could get the answer. So huh. it was, it was weird. So like, this is what I did. And this, this, you know, this is what I was very proud of um, because people overthought it. I'm like, I'm just going to yeah. print everything that looks printable uh-huh and you know that could be a flag or that could be a password that could be something yeah something um, yeah so there's another print statement make it unconditional right so you're just printing mm -hmm. everything that can be printed forget the functions forget in which order they run yep okay so this is something argument 444 decode unfortunately i can't print the decoding of that, but that might be some kind of encoded something. Yep. I can still try to print. I This thing doesn't have bracket closing, so. Um, yeah, no, it's not auto. I, what is the, when they say plus dash, like what is, and then you start a new line. Uh, you... Shift control Z, is that undo here? Nope, control Z. Ah, ah, thank God for normal control there Z. There you go. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to delete that, add a print statement. Never mind that. I'm just going to print that. And I'm so, assuming by the uh, name of bloat.py, there's a lot of um, wasted printing here is what hmm. I'm assuming. And I, again, zip, zip um, turns like, two elements into a tuple. So it could be two lists into like a thing where every item is now a tuple. It's mm. used with list comprehensions as well. Um, and this is the XORing bit. So unfortunately there's nothing I can print here because it uses all the functions. 
so that that's where I ended up. And I thought this was going to reveal something. I'll click uh -huh. save here and we'll go back into my, um, why do I got to? It's because you're still, it's still running G edit. Okay. So LS Python three. Now, copy chance that password. See, it looks like it checks if the password is happy chance. Yep. That that's or, what it looks like. Or rap scallion. I don't know. Um, so let's or uh, they're calling you a rap scallion. I don't know. Let's let's try both. Let's try uh -huh. both. So the only thing is I got a uh I think I got a MV blow.py into the coded the coded pi. Pi, right? Yep. Is that will yep. that do? Will that rename it? Yep, yep, that'll rename it. Yep. Okay. Now you have to re-download it. And I got a W get. Oh no, was that the flag again? Yeah, you just read it out the flag. Uh Python program, copy link address, W get boom. Okay. So now if we Python three, the bloat and what was it? Happy, happy chance and rap scallion. Which it sounds like they're calling you a rap scallion if you get the password wrong, but okay, let's go. Happy chance. There you go. Now it worked. I have no yeah. idea. Like I had. So what had happened to me is that this hadn't worked. Uh -huh. Um. Oh, actually, I got I got the curlies, but it. And I had like, it seemed to have like every fifth character wrong and I just couldn't work it out. And then I just did the same thing in, in REPL and then yeah. it worked. Huh. Um, I, I probably just added like some tiny thing somewhere. In yeah, the, it might've been a in the little, editor. Yep. 